hope that those of you with black and white sets can still see, is an important boundary in some respects. It's called the Mohorovicic discontinuity, or the Moho for, for short, and we'll come across it again when we look at the way that the structure of the Earth has been interpreted using earthquake waves. And some of you have probably heard of Project Moho, uh, in which the uh, geologist of the United States attempted to drill through to the Mohorovicic discontinuity um, <clears throat> beneath the oceans oh, some years ago, perhaps 10 years ago now, a project which was abandoned. They never did get through. Um, <clears throat> that layer then is Gabro. Beneath the Mohorovicic discontinuity is another rock, which is this, we think. This is a rock, Eclogite, uh, composed of garnets and pyroxene and olivine, a rock very rich in iron and magnesium, and a very heavy rock. As we've gone through the continental crust, in fact, we've gone from lighter rock to heavier rock. So the base of the continental lithosphere lies beneath the Mohorovicic discontinuity. This is the base of the lithosphere. That is where the so-called Mohorovicic discontinuity is. The structure then of the, of the continental lithosphere is quite complex. The structure of the oceanic lithosphere is much simpler. Um, <clears throat> let's set ourselves up with uh, the structure of the continental lithosphere and then compare the oce an oceanic lithosphere with it. This is the upper rock of the continental lithosphere, the granite. Beneath it, you'll remember the gabbro, and beneath that again, the eclogite. Those are then the three important rocks of the continental lithosphere. The oceanic lithosphere, on the other hand, although it begins with eclogite, beneath the Mohorovicic discontinuity, has above it also gabbro, in the same way as the continental lithosphere, then is quite different. Above the gabbro in the oceanic lithosphere is basalt, which you remember is a lava. You saw that also in the program on igneous rocks. So there are two very contrasting kinds of lithosphere, oceanic and continental. The junction between the two types of lithospheric um, <coughs> plate is rather complex. In this diagram, the oceanic lithosphere is here, the two layers of it, the top being the basalt in blue, and the lower, the black, being the gabbro. The continental lithosphere is just the same as you saw it on the earlier diagram. At the top here, the granitic part. Beneath that, the gabbro. And here is the Mohorovicic discontinuity. This discontinuity marks the boundary between what we call the crust of the Earth, which is this bit of the oceanic lithosphere and this bit of the continental lithosphere, and this part, which is the mantle. And the asthenosphere lies within the mantle at somewhere around about this level, if we were to distinguish it. So in this case, the continent lies within a lithospheric plate. And that kind of continental margin can be seen in North America, on the east coast of North America. The coastline of North America at present is not at the edge of the continent. In fact, the edge of the continent, or the coastline, uh, 40,000 years ago, when sea level was much lower, was at the edge of what we call the continental shelf. The real boundary of the continent is at the bottom of the rather steep step that you see on the diagram. This steep, rel relatively steep step, which is not really as steep as it looks there, is the continental slope. 
And the real boundary of the North American continent uh, lies at the bottom of that slope. This is where it joins the, the oceanic lithosphere. Now, in, in this case, as I mentioned, the continent sits within uh, the lithospheric plate. And geologically, it's a pretty passive or inactive kind of place. There's not much exciting in terms of geology going on on the east coast of North America. Um, <clears throat> a contrasting kind of continental margin we find on the west coast of South America where the Andes Mountains run down this coast here. And anyone who reads a newspaper knows about the earthquakes and the volcanic activity associated with uh, the Andes Mountains in Chile and Peru and so forth. Um, <clears throat> this is a cross-section of the Andes. This is North America, the South America, I'm sorry, the continent of South America, sitting within a lithospheric plate. This is the lower boundary of the lithosphere. Here is the asthenosphere. So South America sits like a raft, if you like, within the, uh, the lithospheric plate. This is a passive boundary, just like that, which is on the east coast of North America, but the west coast, where the Andes Mountains are, here, is very different. At this point, there's a break between the oceanic lithosphere, which is there, and the continental lithosphere. This oceanic lithosphere is in fact moving down, physically moving down at a few centimeters per year beneath the uh, the lithospheric plate in which the continent of South America sits. And it's this descent of uh, oceanic lithospheric plate, the grinding between the edges of two plates, which causes the earthquakes and the volcanoes. On a second diagram, you can see the same kind of situation, but slightly different, in the case of Japan. Now, on the map, that cross-section is up here at the western margin of the Pacific. Here is the, the arc of the Japanese islands, and here is the Asian mainland. Between the Japanese islands and the Asian mainland is the so-called Sea of Japan. And that is shown, then, on this cross-section. Uh, here is the Pacific Ocean. This, in fact, is the uh, west coast of North America. That's the oceanic lithospheric plate um, of the Pacific. Here it descends, and this is one of the island arcs, as we call them, of the Japanese island arc complex. There's a small uh, piece of oceanic lithosphere trapped between this island arc and another island arc. It descends also, both of these then moving in this direction. And the Asian mainland then lies over to the left of the, the diagram. Those points where um, <coughs> oceanic lithosphere dives down beneath either continental lithosphere, as in the case of Western um, South America, or dives down beneath another piece of oceanic lithosphere, we call subduction zones, and we can show that process quite nicely on this, uh, this model. 